All right, for our next assignment, uh, we're going to be doing a camera tracking. Okay, so the idea with this one is we have a piece of footage, and we want to introduce motion graphics into that piece of footage, okay? Um, the piece of footage we choose will dictate whether or not this is going to be hugely successful, okay? Um, whenever you find a piece of footage, it can be very easy to do in After Effects, and we're going to go with the simplest method for this one because of... Um, after Effects has a very complex tool set over here. We're going to go with a simple one because a lot of time you can use a simple one and it works. Um, so we need to find a piece of footage to use. If you have a camera, you're in the video program, you might have a clip that you already want to use. Sure, feel free to use it. Uh, there's no size requirements on this one. Um, so just grab whatever you want. Um, now, we do want to make sure that it is royalty free. Um, Videvo.net is a really good place to grab HD video that is royalty free and is free to download. Um, they do have this thing embedded where um, shutter stock, shutter stock, yeah, shutter stock is like will pop up and you'll click on a link and you think it's Videvo, but it's shutter stock and they want you to pay. You just have to make sure you click the right stuff. It's like the good free video shutter stock. Right, yeah. <laughs> So right here, it says sponsored by Shutterstock. Those are not the ones we can get, right? Dancing Cats, we don't want that one. <laughs> um, even some of these will say premium. We don't want those. So to make it easier, if you go to filters and say only free, you can get only free clips. Um, these are basically resolutions all over the place. So you might get an HD 4K piece of video. You might get something from Britain, wherever. They're all over. Um, the kind of tracking we're going to do is best done when we don't have any other motion in the scene except for a camera, okay? So imagine that we have this still environment and a camera just kind of moving around it. That's what we're after. So is there movement inside of this one that we uh, don't want? No. Uh, yes, he's moving. We don't want him moving. Oh, he's, he's off the screen. Right. There, so we can't see him. Right, even here, like the fish are moving, the water is moving, the highlights are moving, we can't use that. Can't use this, can't use this, can't use this. This one, that one's pretty good, okay? Camera's flying over it, there's nothing going on crazy. Um, that one could work. Right, and it's 4K. Um, this one, no. This one, no. This one, no. This one, no, okay? So it might take you a minute to go through and find um, a good piece of footage. Uh, my advice to you is if you don't find, like, uh, a good one right away to just keep looking, um, spend a little bit more time. Or if you download it and it doesn't work, then just go out there and find another one. Typically, I'll download a few, and then I will um, see which one works best. Um, you're going to do two of these, so you'll have to find a good, uh, at least two good videos. Okay. Like this one is one that's kind of like on the edge of maybe it would work, maybe it wouldn't. We have. Um, Possibly some slight movement in the trees. We can't really see it good in here, but there might be some slight movement in the trees. Definitely the water is moving, and that'll throw off the tracker. Um, this one could be a good one, too. Um, this is a garbagey one. You could use that, but then that thing moves, and then, you know, we can't use that. Okay, here's another one. This thing is flashing. Can't use that, right? And you can also do searches for things, so if you want something specific like uh, mountain... It'll pull up Shutterstock. You just have to close that window and then go back to your search. And then turn your filter back on and only free clips. This is what we have to do for free stuff, so just deal with that. There we go. No movement on the camera there. This one is just the clouds. This one is time lapse. That one's time lapse. Water, no, no, no. Oh, it's time lapse ones. I thought so too. Uh, here's a little hack. You just put a minus and then time lapse, and then it shouldn't be searching for time lapse. Chances are it still will. <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, yep, it still does time lapse. I did the filter. Oh, I guess I didn't. Huh, only three. All right, so that didn't work. So they, their search algorithm is different. Right, so go through, find some clips. Yeah, dollying, pushing in, pushing out, any of that stuff. Yep. Um, 
You, you can, but typically they're not going to call it panning in. Sometimes they will, but most of the time they won't. Um, you'll set up your project. You'll put your stuff in there. This is one of the clips that I found. Oops. Let me make sure that I can see it. Now, I did have an issue when I first brought this in and tried to play it that it just wouldn't play. And it might do it again, but we'll find out. Yep, it doesn't want to play right now. So I hit the play button and it didn't do anything. Nope. Uh, I'll just scrub through right now. So um, this is the video. You'll see there's a little call out right there. And then you'll see how that piece of graphic, that piece of text, is actually moving with the piece of footage. And then if I go over here, there's another piece, established, 1921. Easiest thing to put in there is just a fact about what it is, right? Um, even if you make up the fact, that's still an alternate fact, and I think those are acceptable nowadays. Um, this is actual facts. Those are actual things. All right. So um, that was one piece that I found. This is another piece. So this is a um, aerial view, kind of like... It's not wanting to play. There we go. Kind of this turning of the environment. Now there is, if we look very closely, there are some cars moving slightly, but that movement is so tiny, I don't think that's going to cause an issue. The majority of the scene seems fine. Um, I don't think that will be a, a problem. We'll find out. And then this is another one. I think I had this one in the video. All right, I got to reboot After Effects. Let's close that. Once in a while, you'll get it where it just doesn't want to hit, like you hit play and it doesn't do anything. All right, so After Effects has, um, in the world of tracking, because this is actually a job, it, the big companies like ILM and Pixar and wherever else, they have jobs that are just tracking where they get a piece of footage, they need to put something digital inside of it, whether it's a 3D thing, a 2D thing, or whatever. Somebody has to go through and track the camera. So they need to create some way to put their digital item into this video and have it move without looking like it's two different things. Yep, so now it's moving. There we go. Um, okay, so this is called camera tracking. And in After Effects, it's the simplest uh, tracker that's out there um, because it does all the work for us. We just have to click the right buttons and then we're good. Um, there's something called 2D tracking, where if I was trying to track somebody, what did I watch? I watched Zombieland the other day. And so in Zombieland, they have all these areas where they have the text, like, right by their heads. And as the character is moving around, that text is, like, going with them. So we wouldn't use a camera tracker for that. We would use 2D tracking, which is basically I'm tracking points on the individual person. And as the person moves, those points are also moving with them, Okay. Uh, there's something called planar tracking, where if I had a bunch of stuff happening, let's say there's a kid jumping up and down right here, but I wanted to track this, the camera tracker wouldn't work it, because it's picking up this kid moving around, uh, but I could track just this area. And it's basically a planar track is an area, and it tracks everything within that area, and it creates this thing that actually moves with perspective. Yes, sir? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, same thing, right? So the first thing to do, track the camera. So we need to get some way to make sure that when, when our graphic moves, it moves the same way as the camera is, okay? Um, once we have that, we can do whatever we want with it, right? So even in here, um, I chose to put this thing right there and put this thing right here, but I could do anything. I could have the text running up the side of the, the building. I could have, you know, the text wrapping around this if I, you know, wanted to get into the 3D stuff a bit more. Um, anything you want. Um, what was that show? Fringe. Fringe was huge. I think a lot of shows back then in the late, uh, early 2000s really to get this thing where every opening scene was like a tracking shot with like the location of where they're at. So that was like a huge thing. Um, all right, so here's how we do it. So I imported my video. You'll see the sizes are different. So this is 1920 by 1080. And this is actually 50 frames per second, OK? Whatever it's, tr it's brought in at, that's what I want to track it at. And that's all my source footage. I want to maintain everything across the board on that one. 
Uh, this other piece of footage is 3840 by 2160, and it's 23.976 frames per second. I think this one is the same thing, 3840 by 2160 at 23.976, okay? So um, I'm gonna grab a different one, and we'll just see what the different one does. So we just drag this onto the new comp button. That brings it in. Um, and then, very difficultly, we go down here to track camera, and then we wait. <laughs> Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to go like a 2D tracker. What it does is it, it you put a location. So let's say I'm going to track um, this building here. I would put a tracker right on this door, and it goes frame by frame trying to find that door. Okay, uh, what a camera tracker does is the first thing is it just shoots out a bunch of points um, anywhere there's a, a sharp point of contrast. So where we have this white building with this black door or dark door, um, it would put a tracker there. For each one of these windows, it would put a tracker. For this little lake right here, it would put a tracker. Now I'm saying a tracker, it might put 10 trackers there, okay? And then each frame, it's looking at what they're doing on every single frame and trying to figure out what, how each piece is moving. If we have pieces that are close, pieces that are in the middle, and pieces that are far, all tracked, and all the tracks are accurate, what we should get at the end is all these points that are layered in 3D space and they're all moving in a certain way. So as these things are moving, think about our parallax assignment right now. Parallax is things far move different than things close. So it's basically like reverse engineering that whole thing, figuring out how these points are moving and then creating a camera based off of that, okay? So right now it's uh, about two minutes remaining. If I move my mouse away from this and wait, it'll say 89 of 226, 91 of 226. So it's going through each frame with all these points. The sharper your image is, the better your tracker could be. There's no guarantees, okay? Um, you could have a piece that's super sharp, but there's a reflection, or there's, um, like the, the last one, there was a highlight that comes in, a, a sun ray. Um, I was afraid that the sun ray would kind of cancel out some of the stuff, but it didn't, it worked, okay? Um, now, this is After Effects 3D Tracker. Um, there are a million 3D trackers out there. Um, if you take the Nuke class that we have, we get into Nuke, and inside Nuke, there's a 2D tracker, there's a planar tracker, there's a camera tracker. The idea with any tracking you do is trying to figure out what the next step is, what I wanna do with this stuff. In After Effects, we're gonna get basically um, a location, okay, and that location, is gonna be what is tracked and what moves. With camera tracking, I get a 3D camera and I can send that 3D camera into Maya, I could send it into After Effects, I could send it into Cinema 4D. There's 20 different avenues I could take that 3D track. With this one that we're doing here, it's stuck in After Effects. I'm sure there's plugins you could take it out and do some stuff with it, but it's very limited as to what you can do, okay? Um, there is inside of After Effects, track camera, that's the one we clicked on. And then there's this other one that says Track in Boris FX Mocha. So Mocha is a free software that you get with After Effects. Uh, tracking. Um, you get the uh, slimmed down version. So you're getting the uh, just for After Effects version of Mocha, but Mocha actually has another version that allows you to send it out to different applications. So in this one, they're actually tracking the guy's head, tracking behind him, and then they can do different things. Sometimes they'll track a person just to do some color adjustments. So like on this character, they may want to replace his eyes. They may want to um, lighten his skin tone. They may want to do whatever. Uh, he has a scar in his face they want to get rid of. Um, they can do 15,000 things with a track. Um, so this one here is, you see this um, plane right there. This is planar tracking. So they're actually tracking the front of this, probably so they can replace the um, uh, license plate. Oops, come on. You're so close, just, just click, there we go. Move. There it goes. Nope, no, they just darkened it and added the highlight, uh, the bright spots, there we go. Okay. Oh yeah, yep, they removed that. Uh, yeah. I don't know if they did or they just darkened it, because I can still kind of see it there. Yeah. So anything to kind of enhance the video, just in certain spots, obviously you can do that. 
Um, so that's another tracking tool. There's another one called um, Buju. This is just a camera tracker. Um, so this software is dedicated just to camera tracking. Uh, there's another one called PF Track. This is another camera tracker. Typically, someone who does this as their job, they get the piece of footage, they bring in their software, they track the footage, and what they're outputting is basically just the camera. Like, this is, this is a camera you can use into your scene. Um, no, thank you. And in some of these, they're actually getting pretty good, where like this one, uh, if this is what they're showing, they've shot a piece of footage around here, probably with a drone, and then they've tracked it, and then they're rebuilding the geometry in 3D. So it's pretty awesome. So is this how they have, like, you know how they show, like, Marvel trailers and they've got stuff, like, what, they're going to have stuff in there that was in a movie? Right. So, how they do that? yeah. So they're doing, like, the tracking part of it, like, every time they're doing the tracking, um, and then they'll do some sort of element. Marvel is, like, pretty much every shot has some sort of yeah. tracking done to it. Cool. So, uh, we did not get the uh, horrible banner saying that it failed. Uh, we did end up with these red X's and green and blue and whatever. Um, that means that it worked, okay? Now, is it successful? We don't know. We'll have to test it to find out. So, the idea now is that if I was to click and drag my, my um, time indicator, um, those dots should stay in the same spot that they are. So, as I drag this, and this is a big piece of footage, and I'm recording my video, so it's going kind of slow. But it looks like if I move my um, playhead a little bit further, it looks like they're pretty much staying where they should be. Let me scoot down here and see if there's any points down here. Nope. So this definitely worked, uh, but we don't have anything down here. Now, some stuff I could do to change this. Um, I could change my track point size. I could change my target size. I could go under advanced and say that I want to do a detailed analysis. This will basically go through the whole thing and spend more time kind of discerning what is a good track, what is not. Um, this track point size and this target size, let me jump over to um, uh, this, this tracker, track motion. Okay, so this is a track point. This is what it's tracking, whatever is inside this area. So when we look at that um, track point size, that's what this is. Sorry, that's what this is. I'll make that bigger. Oh, that's my camera tracker still. Um, that's what one of these is. It doesn't matter which one. Uh, and then the other one is that. So this outer one is the area it's looking for. So if I were to put this track point, let me find something that's very distinct. I have to pivot on accident right there okay so if I was to put this here what it's gonna do is it's gonna look for this pattern of pixels it's not gonna look for a corner of a building it doesn't know what a corner of a building is it's just gonna look for light pixels that are at this angle light pixels that are here and dark pixels that are there when it goes to the next frame it's going to adjust that when it goes to the next frame it's going to adjust that and it's going to follow it it's not tracking right now so it's not doing it but that's what it's going to be doing when we are on this one and we look at these two things here, that's the two sizes that we can play with, is the track point size, uh, which I'm pretty sure is that middle one, and then the target size, which is the bigger one. It might be reversed, uh, but basically all you need to know is you can make both of these smaller and sometimes that will help. You can make both of these bigger and sometimes that will help. The idea with this is depending on the kind of detail, in this scene we have a lot of small detail, so it might be worthwhile to shrink these two sizes down. If we had a lot of big detail, it might be worth to make those things bigger, okay? Um, so we could definitely try making these bigger or making them smaller. Uh, we could also do this, and then all we have to do, I think it's doing it, isn't it? No, yes. Uh, oh, I didn't click detailed analysis, so I didn't change, right? So if I click detailed analysis, there's no other buttons to click. You just click that, and then it just jumps back into that process, okay? Um, now, I'm going to cancel this. I'm just going to jump back to my piece of footage that does work. And I'm just going to delete out all the other stuff that I have here. Okay. 
So this is typically something that is um, a good mix of points. All the major areas where I would want to put something is right here, okay? Um, let me click that off, okay? So this is what we would typically get after we're done and we've tracked our footage. Um, as I move my mouse over these points, we get these little bullseyes. And the bullseyes are basically giving you a preview as to how it's tracked, like what, it, what it's actually like figured out. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to, let's say this area, cause I wanna put something right here. And you'll see there's uh, two different arrows, right? So if I go to uh, that one or this one, okay? So this one looks like it's maybe in more of a perspective than it should be, where that one looks like it's in probably the same perspective as the brick, okay? It doesn't matter, it's just like, uh, you know, if you're gonna pick between two points, pick the one that's better. So I'm gonna right click and I'll get these options here. Um, every one of these, we need a camera in order for this to work, okay? Um, if we were just to create a piece of text, the text wouldn't move with it because we need to create this camera that's going to move with it. Um, so each one of these will say text and camera, solid and camera, null and camera, shadow catcher, camera and light, and then some other stuff down there. Um, so I'm gonna do a um, text and camera. Eventually I'm gonna come back and just do a null, okay? So create text and camera, I just click off, and now it's tilted, I don't care about that. And if I hit play, there it is. So all I've done, I brought the footage in, put it on a comp, track the camera, right clicked and said create text and camera. That's all I've really done for this to work. Mm -hmm. There is, right? <laughs> I just wanted to show you how simple it could be, <laughs> right? So this this is tracked. It obviously works. Yes, sir. The best software. Yeah. Um, typically, I like to use um, Nuke for doing all my tracking because I already have the license for it and it can go anywhere. Um, however, if I'm already in After Effects, in order for me to get this piece of footage into Nuke. I have to save it out as a sequence, bring it into Nuke, do all my tracking, and then export that out and bring that back into After Effects. So if it's something like this, I'll jump into After Effects and I'll just do it there. But if it gets more complex or After Effects fails, because that's what you'll typically get if you have a bad piece of footage, it'll just say solve failed, cannot do this, it doesn't work. And then you just have to try something else. Um, but typically, whatever your tool you're in is typically a good enough one. Yeah. Oh, you can do it. It's not that difficult. It's just like everything, you know. Um, all right. So that's how that works, right? So it's on there. Now this gives you text. So there's my text and this gives me a camera. If I go to the text and I go to the rotate, it's already in 3D. Uh, let me switch this other mode. It's already in 3D. Um, I can rotate the text. I can double click and just change the text. I can shrink the text down, right? Change the color. There we go. Um, I could even change the mode of this and set this to, let's say, a multiply and make this a little bit lighter like that. There we go. So now we're actually seeing some of the brick pattern coming through. And so now if I hit play, it's still there. It's the Sean building. Okay, stuff to look out for. Um, make sure your lines look straight, right? So the bottom of the S where the brick is right here if this was really far off, uh, nope. You have to play with this to get the right one to move. There we go. If this was like this, that would look weird being on that angle. Um, even if it looked right from one view, like even if it looked right there, you know, that should be a call sign that, hey, something's off. And so you want to fix that. Okay. Sometimes I'll adjust the orientation. Sometimes I'll adjust the rotations themselves. Um, you can also adjust the position. Be careful how you adjust the position because this is something floating in 3D. The second I start to move it, it's gonna start taking it away from feeling like it's locked onto the building. As a, for instance, if I go to my move tool and I pull this over and pull this like this, let me make this really big. Okay, so this is visually, oops. If I can click it, come on. There. 
Okay, so visually it's in roughly the same spot, but as I rewind this and then hit play, see how it doesn't feel anymore like it's locked in with the camera. It definitely is moving with the camera, but it doesn't feel like it's locked onto that wall anymore. Right, so that's a bad track. And sometimes even a tracking point you clicked on will be a bad track. Um, you just pick a different one, okay? So now we're never gonna just create text for this assignment. We're gonna create something bigger that we can uh, make look fancier. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to uh, right click again. And this time I'm gonna do create null in camera. Now just as a um, uh, info, if I were to right click now, I already have a camera, so it's not gonna ask me to create a camera again. It'll just say create text, solid, or null, okay? We're gonna stick with these, um, basically the null one, but the other three for now. So this gives me a null, which is tracked right to that point. I need to create something that I will then drop into that spot, okay? So I'm gonna go into a new composition. I'm gonna set this composition setting to the same setting as this piece of footage. So I know this piece of footage is 1920 by 1080 at 50 frames a second, and the length of this is about 20 seconds. Okay, now whatever I want there, I'm gonna do here. That way it's self-contained, okay? So I'm gonna just create some uh, simple animation of what I want there. So I'm gonna do a shape here, so just double click, and then shrink this down, open this up. You have to remember how to use your shapes again. Um, and I'm just gonna scale this up, and this is gonna happen for something like this. Think of the, the movement that's happening in the camera you don't want your animation to be too distracting. So typically, if this thing is moving nice and slow, I don't want a thousand things happening in my animation super quick. So be elegant about how you're doing them. Um, so I'm going to go here. I'll put this up to 100. Um, that's fine. And then I'm going to go back a couple frames and then set this to like 120. And then I'm going to easy ease this, don't forget about easy easing. I'm going to frame this. And then think back to like our first assignments, like this is what we're doing here, just that same stuff. So now I have this. And that might be a little bit too soft, we'll see. Oh, I gotta push that in. There we go. So I may have to adjust, but we'll see. Uh, and then I'll do some text in here. Totally forgot what it's even called. <laughs> India Gate. I could. Then you don't get to see me make it from scratch. Uh, India Gate. I'll just put that in there. Okay. So I'm putting a couple pieces of fact. Um, let's go to our character. Let's go to this. Put that in the middle. A little bit of formatting here. India gate. And I'm going to make that one nice and big. And then I'm going to turn my... Um, title action safe on so that I can click on my text and then just nudge this so that the things are aligned. So you want to put it right there. So it's left and right it's centered and I think that's probably a good centering that way. Yep, that works good. Okay. And then I'm going to animate those pieces coming in. So I'm going to jump down to my animators. So you'll see all those things that we've done in the past um, 12 weeks, 11 weeks, all coming back. Uh, position. I'm going to go to my advanced. I'm going to go to um, lines. Actually, I'll go to words. That might be good. And I'll start this off frame. So I'm going to start it down there. There we go. So bloop. And then this will start. That goes there. And then I'll just put a little shape. 
and then I will track map. Right? Okay, now my circle is a little bit too big. It looks like it's being cut off at the top. So I'm just going to go into that keyframe there and just set this to um, uh, 95, I think. Yeah, that should be good. And then even this one, I don't think I want that to go as much. Uh, no, that'll be fine. That's fine. All right. So back to this. All right. Uh, nope, back to this one. That's why I have it on. So now I need to bring that in and replace that null. So I'm going to go to my project. This is where we can't have things messy, right? So I need to rename this new. You can't see that. I can't just do that. There we go. Tell me when uh, I'm at the edge. Or I'm way off still. Oh, I guess I was good right there. That was like perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I should minimize that. Okay. Um, so this is new. New Delhi. <laughs> um, make a folder, comps. I don't need to go through all that, but you get the idea. Right. So I'm going to just drag this comp down into here. Um, if these comp settings are different, things would not fall into place correctly. So I need to make sure everything is the same setting. So like I said, this one is 1920 by 1080 at 50. This comp is 1920 by 1080 at, 10, at uh, 50, okay? Um, so I need to make this 3D. Um, it does that. That's fine. Um, if we were to look at what the, um, uh, let's go to the top view here. If we were to look at where this camera is at, it's actually got some weird angle down here shining up, but our plane is like this, so it comes in weird. We don't need to be concerned about that in After Effects. If this was 3D, definitely. Um, so I'm going to go to the position of my null, and I'm just going to copy it, go to the position of this one, and paste it. And it goes right there. I'm going to go to the rotation of the null, go to the rotation of this. The orientation change, so copy this, paste it there, and now it's on there. Now the reason we would use a null is because if I had 15 items, it's very easy just to attach those 15 items to the null. Yes, sir? Um, if I parented it, it would just... Um, connect the information, but it wouldn't actually replace these values. So it would, it would, if I move the null, it would move the other one, but it wouldn't actually like change the values of this to get it into that spot. Okay. If I did an expression, if I did an alt click and drug this, oops, the other way, alt click this and drag that, then it would replace that. Uh, but then I couldn't adjust it if I needed to. Okay. okay. So typically you're just going to copy paste, copy paste. Um, I'm sure there's a plugin out there that'll do it for you, um, but it took two seconds. All right, so now I'm just adjusting the position of this. So you can see I'm kind of going through each one. That's not the direction I need. That's not the direction I need. This is the direction I need. So I want to get this lined up. Okay, now I'm probably going to be cutting this off some. So if I rewind here, oops, we can't see it, can we? Yep. All right, so this is like off, like we can't see it right, when the action happens. So I'm going to go to about there and just slide this whole bar down. That way, as we get to that spot, there it comes in. Now, I may not want it up that high either. Let's see if I can just grab the green arrow and just slide it down. This might, again, screw it up, but we still have the null. We can just copy and paste the values if we do screw it up. Yep, it still looks like it's synced in. Okay, now we do have this issue right here, right? So that's what this button will do. That button will ignore the, uh, the composition settings, and it'll actually make it bigger. Now, sometimes it does that, and then we just have to say, okay, well, then that's not going to fix it. So we just jump back into here, and we just resize our stuff so it doesn't cut off there. Um, or we can just go into the comp settings and just make this taller. There we go. So now it shouldn't cut off. That won't it? it won't. Nope. Um, as long as we did it first, like we set it up and made sure it worked, then came back and tweaked it, then we're good. I think I want to shrink the text down just a smidge. I'm just going to scale this to like 95 also because I scaled the other stuff to 95. Cool. Very cool. Uh, throw some motion blur on this. 
jump back to that. Very cool. And I'm watching it a couple times just to make sure it still feels like it. Usually, if you have a bad track, it's either incredibly bad, like obviously this didn't work, or you get this like shaky thing where for whatever reason that piece of footage is like shaking. Um, and sometimes it's like subtle and then you'll just see it like shake every once in a while. So you just have to kind of watch it um, a few times just to make sure. All right, that seems to work. Okay, so uh, if I wanted something else, I'd make something else. So um, we want to have um, at least one animated thing in each one of these. So we're going to do two videos, two tracks, one animated thing in each one. Um, I have this other one that's a call out. So that's what this one looks like. And then I have this other one that is established. Okay, so any one of these I can just drag into this. Uh, go back to my camera, back to the effects, back to the camera controller, bring up the points, find out where I want to put this. I'm going to put it right there in front of that guy. might be kind of neat to put it like right there on that wall. So let's do a null right there. Um, I have two nulls, they're both called tracking nulls, so it may help to also name these. Front, side wall. So there's my established, I'm gonna go to my position, make sure it's 3D, go to my front position, copy, paste, go to the rotation, copy, paste, okay. Obviously it's off, so then I come back and rotate. Now this uh, piece of footage doesn't match, obviously. I mean, I could leave it like that, that doesn't hurt it. Um, I may want to scale it up, so that's something I can still do if I decide to scale it up. Some things to be aware of outside of everything else we've been aware of. of. Um, there is some distortion that would happen. So if I have a GoPro, the edges of the video are typically warped. And so as it's tracking stuff, it might be fine, but then as it's moving, it's, you know, it's not going to look uh, locked in. So um, you just want to be aware that, you know, there is some warping that could happen. Um, further into your tracking career, you can go through and tweak all those things. Uh, for now, we're not really too concerned about it. Uh, for now, you can just kind of play with these values here and see if you can get it to line up better. And you'll see how I'm bouncing between all of them. Like that seems like it's pretty well lined up with that. A little bit more on the X or Y direction here. A little bit there. Okay, now obviously that's low, I can't even see it, so that's kind of stupid. Uh, let me jump back into my established thing. Let me make this one line and, whoops, that's not the right one. There we go. I'll just move this right to the center. I think my animation still plays out. Yep, good. And then I can just tweak it. Um, I could tweak it in either spot. So if this moving it in the Y kind of screwed it up here, I could just jump to the other one and fix that. Uh, this line, this is what I was talking about before. So the 21 is on the line, but the other one isn't. So I'm going to um, just adjust my stuff, just rotatings. That looks pretty good. Yep. And then again, I'll kind of find a spot that fits it good. Um, yeah, that seems to be good there. Yeah, there's 1921. Cool. I'd probably move it over too. That's kind of offset. I'm just centering it a little bit better and then double checking it again. Cool. Now, after that's all done, you can do a lot of stuff to this to tweak it, to make it look better, or whatever. Um, uh, I keep a folder on my drive. That is resources, that is, um, I'm gonna drag my particles into this thing. There we go. 
And these are clips you can find on um, YouTube that are free, other websites that are free. So this video is just this. It's just like these little particle type things. Now, obviously it looks stupid like that. So we would um, leave it here. We would put this on a uh, mode, probably like an ad. And then you'll see how it adds these like little sparkles to it. Now we don't want to leave them just kind of floating right there because it doesn't feel like it's moving with the camera. So we want to make them 3D. Uh, I want to scale it up. I want to rotate it. There we go. I'm just trying to make sure it fills the screen so I don't see any weird edges on it. And then obviously it rotates the correct way. There we go. All right, so I'm just going to watch. Okay, so it's kind of cut off there, so I'll make it a little bit bigger. Maybe scoot it up a little bit more. And then it goes here. All right, so it's still kind of cut off there, so uh, maybe I'll just animate this too. Actually, I'll just scale it up even bigger, 300. You're so close. You're so close. Um, I am going to animate it. So I think it'll just be subtle if I just squish it over a little bit. I have a little bit more room here, so let's go there. We'll go to that spot, and then we'll just go up. All right. And they're kind of dusty particles, so they're not going to be like a whole lot. All right, so that's already that's too distracting anyway, right? So uh, I'm going to take the opacity down to like 20%. And this just gives it more of an environmental feel, OK? Now, anytime we do tracking, things like that help sew those elements into that piece because before we had a piece of footage, we had stuff that was on top of it, and then it was pretty obvious that those two things were not there. But now we have this other element that's on top of that, so it just kind of blends the things in together because, you know, if we have a sparkle going on top of that, well, then now it's going over the top of both of those. So it just, again, feels a little bit more sewn in. Yes, sir. Right, it's just like that. Yeah. It just kind of helps sew those elements in together. Now, the other thing, like if we had a lens flare, we could actually put a lens flare on top of those things too, right? You could take this into multiple depths uh, for sure. Um, you could even add like, you know, this is, bless you. This is our graphic of this established or this India Gate New Delhi. But if I had an actual picture that I grabbed from here, brought it into Photoshop, and Photoshopped those things there and locked that in, that could make it look like it's even more there, right? This is going way too fast, too, these particles. I'm just going to go to my um, scaling down here and stretch this out to, like, 250%. That's how you it yes. Now, you'll see that it kind of stutters, right? Like, every frame is now duplicated two and a half times. So if I turn on frame blending, which is that one, make sure it's on there, that'll actually do a little bit better job where it's like blending between them, but we'll see how well that does. Yeah, so 250 may have been a little bit too much. Let's go 150. There's only so much you can stretch a video out before it looks horrible. So I think 150, which should be good with the frame blending on there. Now that's where Nuke would come into because <clears throat> there's a plugin for Nuke that you can use where let's say their example is they have an airplane that's flying <clears throat> and they have it stretched out. So frame one, it's here, frame two, it's there. So it's like a big jump between these two frames. This plugin will actually track the movement of the, ca of the plane and it'll create a version of the plane in between it, which is like amazing. There we go. So those dust particles don't look like they're moving too slow or stuttery. They feel like they're kind of sewn in there. And then, of course, we could always drop in. Um, drop this into a comp after we're all done and then do some color correction on it. Uh, let's say we did a photo filter. Sure. Let's do a um, hue and saturation on this. Let's do curves. 
No, I'm kind of blowing it out there. I don't think that curb is going to do anything. It's going to help us out. No. And restore some of that. No, but it's just blown out. Most of the footage that's there that's free um, is good footage, but it, you know sometimes they're just like, I'll throw this up there <laughs> because I don't want to use it. Yeah, so that's all right. And then, of course, vignette, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, once you're done with this, we have a little trick that we have to do to get all the pieces together. So just like all of our other assignments, title card, transition, tracking one, transition, tracking two. Because we have different resolutions here, so this is 1920. If I were to click on one of these other ones, it's 3840. That's not a huge deal. You can scale things up and down. That's not anything big. When we get into the frames per second, that's where it gets kind of sketchy. Because what happens is um, the footage that's inside of After Effects animated, it actually reads what those animation frame rates are throughout the different comps. So if I took one that's 23.976, one that's 50, and then one that's like 30, those three wouldn't mesh well together. Okay, So you're going to render out each movie individually. Then you'll go back into After Effects, title card, transition, movie one, transition, movie two. Okay, so once you're done, you'll render out a movie of your tracking. Then bring that back in. So just re-import it. And then put it all together. Yes, sir. So we're actually making two of these? Correct. Once you've done one, you'll see how quick the process is. It's not, uh, okay. it doesn't take terribly too long. Uh, so let me save this, and then I'll open up one of my other ones, just so you can see some of the other stuff that you've done with this. Oh, yes. Let me drive. Camera tracking. That. Yes. Yep. So ignore the um, stuff there. The title card. We don't need to see that. I got a question. Oh. Uh huh. It should. Like, it should be rendered out into your folder. I mean, like, you know how it says that, like, green binary? Oh, right here? Yeah. Oh, this is saving it to the memory on the computer. Oh. Okay. So once, once you're done on the computer or whatever, the software, and you close it down, well, it just clears that out. Oh. All right. So you can see this one here is my title card for one of them. Here's the piece of footage. <clears throat> and then this one, it's hard to see, but there's a tracked piece of text right here. Come on. There you go. It's a tracked piece of text right there. And you'll notice, too, like as I zoom in, that is gone. As I zoom back out where I originally did it, it's back in there. Um, all right, so now it's going to come down here and then that okay so this was um, you could do that in Illustrator just draw out each one of those shapes um, this this uh, vine growing so this was something that I drew inside of Illustrator and then look at the assets we have here right so this is just a stroke just revealing itself we've done that and then each one of these leaves is just a separate leaf that's just scaled and rotated and then I just animated so they're all synced up. Cool. Dun -dun -dun. I like that with that camera. Yeah, how it slides down. Yeah. And that's one of the things you just don't know, like what if it's gonna work. Like that could have been too fast for it, and it just like er, not gonna work. Uh, but you try it and see. This one has a lot of detail, which helps it. So a lot of that brick, being able to pick up a lot of those contrast points. Um, the first time I ever tried to like shoot a piece of footage and then track it, I'm like, I'm going to keep it as clean as possible. I'll have nothing in the scene. It'll just be like a clean floor with some dots on it. And then I'll do that. And it was like, nope. I went out where there's brick and it's like perfect. Like no issues. It's a lot of tracking points. Mm -hmm. You can, yeah. I have no problem with that. Just keep in mind, like, if you think about what you're trying to put on there, if you have an idea of it, like the New Delhi one is easy, I can look up a whole Wikipedia page of New Delhi uh, India Gate and put any fact I grab from there. This one, obviously, there's I have no idea where this is. I might know if I looked it up, but 
um, I would have to create something else or, you know, stone archway is kind of like a boring one.